again at Mookers. This is Brendan Murphy. We collect five or six of uh, at MOOC, and this week we're talking about open education resources. So I really want to start, go back to the, the first day of school, when you, when you first walked into your new school and you met everybody, and everybody offered to help, you know. Here's some lessons I use or some materials that I have. Uh, you need anything, you ask me. And, and you know you're working in a place where people like to, to work together. But it's a school, and nobody gets paid much. And, and you especially are a first-year teacher, and you've got no money, and you've got nothing but debt. So you're looking for as much free stuff as you can get. So you probably Internet's looking for free, 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 free. And you kind of get what you pay for. And you end up making more stuff than you actually find. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and, and then there's the copier down the hall. And, and it's great to make copies. You can, if you're teaching poetry and, and you need a Langston Hughes poem, you can go to the library and make a copy for your students uh, uh, so that they can study it and learn from it. And, and that's perfectly fine. It's okay to make those copies for educational use. It, it, it's actually kind of encouraged. So you can, you can do that and the copy works. But what gets us in trouble is... Um, <clears throat> Those people who use the copier to, to make copies of, of workbooks, and we've probably seen, uh, all seen one or two of those people or more. I even know one woman, uh, a story of one woman who, who got a promotional workbook or something from a, a conference she went to, and uh, it said right there in the bottom of every page, do not copy for your class, promotional use only. And she used it for years because she liked it, thought, thought it was great, so she kept using it. Uh, unfortunately, that's illegal. They call it copyright for a reason, because they have the right to tell you if you can make a copy or not. The owner of whoever uh, developed or, or, or <coughs> uh, created whatever it is you're copying. So they have the right to say, you can use this or not, you can make copies or not. Um, However, you know, there are some exceptions. You know, we already talked about the educational exception. Um, that doesn't count for workbooks, though, because workbooks are educational books made to be used in the classroom, so you're not supposed to make copies of them. Um, it's not like copying a, a page from a book and having students highlight it to learn from. This is doing problems or whatnot whatnot on a, on a worksheet and, and there is a difference there um, <clears throat> but there are other other uh, exceptions for copyright if you buy a CD you're allowed to take it home and and, and rip it to your computer and, and put it copies on your iPod uh, if you want to <clears throat> um, if you buy a DVD you, you should be allowed to make a copy and put it on your media streamer streamer at home but the DVD is locked. You can't just put it in your computer and copy and paste it somewhere. Uh, it, it doesn't really work that way. You have to crack the DVD, which is illegal. So um, some people are saying that Motion Picture Association of America is taking away our rights to make a personal copy of something that we bought. <clears throat> well, they're saying you can't make copies, period. You have to uh, pay for every copy. So there's home use, and that's up in the air a little bit. Um, there's also the idea of fair use. Fair use, you, you see it almost every night when you are watching TV, if you're watching the sports section or whatnot, they'll show a clip of the sporting event, and um, you know they'll show a short clip, to inform you uh, and, and highlight what they're what they're talking about, and, and that's called fair use. As long as they don't use too much of the sporting event, they're allowed to use that for free. <clears throat> um, so this idea that you can use something that someone else created, as long as as it's only like thirty seconds or so, that's called fair use. If you have a purpose for using it that does not include selling it for money. Um, so, <clears throat> this has spawned the idea of uh, remix 
books and content. And uh, there are people who are doing or creating whole new entertainments based on remixing, cutting up old entertainment or old media and putting it together in a way that is uh, completely new and different. <clears throat> so they say they're using fair use and creating a whole new product that is theirs. Well, the, obviously the old established people are saying, no, what you're doing is stealing our stuff and, and <clears throat> reselling it. So you have to pay us. And I think there's probably a middle ground, or I think most people would really be happy with it. Yeah, if I remixed your stuff and used it, then <clears throat> you'll get a royalty somewhere down the line, but it won't be the $200,000 that you're asking for each song because I used 50 songs to make one thing. So um, <clears throat> there's got to be some sort of middle ground there somewhere, but, uh, you know, who knows when it's going to come. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about open use. And probably the most famous open use is Linux operating system. And this is an operating system developed by Linus Torvalds. <clears throat> and um, what he did when he first created it was say, it's not complete, it's not perfect right yet, but I'm going to put it out there with the whole source code, tell you how I made it, and, and you can <clears throat> do what you want with it. If you want to create something more, go for it. All I'm going to ask you to do is say, I based it on the Linux kernel, and here's what I did. And all of your code has to be open too. So <clears throat> everything moves on from that. But this is open and it's not free. Um, yes, you can download all of the, any anything from Linux, uh, you could generally download for free um, and use however you like as long as you're not packaging it up and reselling it. But there are hairs that people can split. I remember in in the mid late nineties, I was trying to put Linux on computers, and it was really difficult. Uh, Fedora was big then, and Fedora was also um, <clears throat> packaged by a company called Red Hat, and they had Fedora and they had Red Hat, and Fedora they gave away for free because they had to, and Red Hat they would package it onto a CD and send it to you for a small price. And if you paid that price, you got the CD and you got um, technical support. So they weren't really selling the Linux, they were selling the CD and the time and energy it took to create a CD. And back then, creating a CD was not always a 100% thing. I burned a lot of CDs and, and turned them into Frisbees, I guess. So, <clears throat> You know, it was kind of attractive to buy a copy of Red Hat and know it was there and and, um, and get a little technical support to put it on your computer because it wasn't easy even when you had the CD to put it on the computer and because uh, you, you may have needed extra drivers and extra support and whatnot. So um, that's the way open source works. Yeah, you can get the source for free, but... Uh, to get it on your computers and use it effectively, it's not so easy. You need to know what you're doing a lot of times. So uh, it's not always 100% user-friendly. And, and a lot of times you may have to create something custom for your design or, or your particular needs. So you're either going to have to hire somebody who knows what they're doing or hire technical support of somebody who knows what they're doing. And so... Free is not so free, <clears throat> but it is open. So you're not paying for somebody else's proprietary stuff, and, and you're not uh, paying for stuff you don't need, and you know exactly what's going on, in, and it, what's going on is what you want it to go on. <clears throat> so um, as open has continued to grow, some... Uh, uh, what do you say, etiquette has, has, has grown up around it. Um, and it's really been kind of written into copyright and copyleft laws, and, and it, it, very, it, it can get very detailed. Um, and then there can be very 
exact legal positions that you stake out. Uh, but for the most part, in, in beginning, it's not... Um, you, you don't worry too much about the legal. You worry about what does it mean for me and what do I have to do. And that is, <clears throat> you can use the stuff for free most of the time, but you're expected to give something back. And the ratio is probably 80% to 20%. Take 80% and give back 20%. But uh, give back to the community in general. In um, open education resources, I'll take somebody else's modules and I'll take somebody else's uh, um, um, units and, and, and whole courses. I plan on taking this whole Edmook course and, and repackaging it for uh, the professional development in my high school. Um, it's still going to be open. I will still invite other people to, to be participants. I, and actually, I really want other people outside of my high school to be participants. To, to help mentor my teachers and to become, uh, to, to expand our learning environment, our network learning outside of our own walls. So I, I think that would be a positive. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this, I'm going to repackage it a little bit, put it in my school, open it up for everybody, and, and it will be a whole new resource. It'll be at MOOC <clears throat> specifically for a high school, a one to one high school. And uh, we'll call it uh, OOE, or OOE, the Open Online Experience. And um, <clears throat> I hope some of you from this will, will join us. Uh, but, uh, you know, keep up on me on that in the future, because uh, I look forward to uh, uh, developing that, and I, and I hope it'll be a, a, worthwhile, <laughs> a worthwhile course for you. Thank you.